carburetor. All right, all right, it's a smart carb. Alright, alright, jokes aside, yes, on this motor, I will be using the brand new Smart Carb 2 28mm version. However, in this video, I will not talk about this carburetor just yet. Or not at all. That's gotta be for next time. This week's video is about the 208. But the goal of it is to answer the question, why do this conversion? And why not go the simple route? Why not just order a 210, plop it on and ride along happily? To me, the appeal on this conversion lies within the fundamentals of Vespa tuning. It is not about changing everything and buying a full setup off of a shelf, but it's going to look at the different paradigms that make up an engine and trying to improve them. So before I go any further, let's take a look at how a Vespa engine actually works. I couldn't find the author of this amazing animation. This is a small frame motor, not a large frame motor, but the concept is the same. So whoever made this, big thank you. So like most two-stroke motors, gas comes in, goes through ports into the combustion chamber, is being compressed, explodes, and goes out the exhaust port. What makes the Vespa motor so special is that it has a disc valve. It is the crankshaft that determines when gas comes in and when it doesn't. So the crankshaft dictates three major paradigms of this engine, which is one, stroke, which is the distance the piston travels from the top dead center to the bottom dead center. Secondly, we have compression, which is the ratio of how much the displacement volume is compressed into the cylinder head. But the crankshaft also determines the bottom dead center and where the piston sits at that point. And then lastly, the crankshaft also determines the inlet time of the disc valve. With these three factors isolated, what happens if we bring in a long stroke crankshaft into this mix using the original bore? For this engine, I am using a Matsukeli racing crankshaft. This crankshaft specifically has a stroke of 60 millimeters, meaning the piston goes up 1.5 millimeters higher and 1.5 millimeters lower than the stock 57 millimeter crankshaft. The increased stroke changes the displacement. So this motor will have 208 cc compared to the original 200 cc. Remember, we are using the stock bore. We're not changing the bore at all. This is still the stock cylinder. So with the piston moving up 1.5 millimeters higher, on any other motor, I would put a spacer either underneath or on top, depending on what port timings I want. With the stock P200 cylinder, which is a very inefficiently designed two-stroke cylinder, there is so much clearance in the original crank and cylinder setup to the top, the compression is really low, that by adding a 60 millimeter crankshaft, it simply clears. It increases the compression, giving us more power, but it does not over compress the cylinder. The piston also goes 1.5 millimeters further down and it actually now clears the exhaust port and the intake ports. That way gases flow straight over the piston helping with cooling. This is like a minor advantage, but it is an advantage nonetheless. Remember, I'm not using a spacer here. On the original motor, the piston simply did not clear these ports. And then lastly, another advantage that comes with the long stroke crankshaft is an increased inlet timing. Simply put, the crankshaft is cut a little longer to let more gas in. By using a degree measuring tool, here I will be comparing the original 57 millimeter crankshaft inlet time to the new Matsukeli one. For the sake of record keeping, I measured two 
top dead center so I can have an inlet time before and after top dead center on both crankshafts. In order to measure the inlet time, I measure the point where the crankshaft opens the intake and at what point it closes. And in between, I check with the dial gauge when it hits top dead center. Measuring the original 57 millimeter crankshaft from Piaggio, it comes to 111 degrees before top dead center. And moving past top dead center, we get to a total length of 159 degrees overall disc valve inlet time. The Mazu Kelly crankshaft in contrast came to 108.1 degrees before top dead center but longer after top dead center to a grand total of 182 degrees yes so in conclusion our 60 millimeter crankshaft the one thing that we added to this 208 conversion increases our stroke and our displacement our compression and our inlet time what I didn't discuss here are cylinder timings, meaning the exhaust port timing and the intake port timing. This by itself could be another video, so I am going to make that another video. But in this case, I measured them both and they both came out to be in the 160s and the high 1-teens. In fact, the 60 millimeter crankshaft port timings were lower than the stock ones, which is to be expected, especially if we don't put a spacer underneath. What I did do is I took the cylinder out, I redesigned the exhaust port and I raised it by 1.5 millimeter, as well as raising the intake ports just a little bit. I do not have any footage of this, um, but this ended up being 120 degree intake and 172 degree exhaust port timing, giving me a way more aggressive layout than the stock 57 millimeters. I also took the grinder to the rotary pad and I opened it up more, allowing me to have an overall inlet time of 195 degrees, furthermore unlocking a little bit more potential of this conversion. Now let's talk real quick about this uh, degree wheel here. If you like it, uh, you can download it on my website. I put a link in the description below. Just some instructions as well on how to put it together. That way you don't have to buy a fancy digital tool. And you can measure your timings at home before you put an engine together. Simply go to my website and at the bottom there is a category that will say degree wheel. Or you can just follow the link and you can download the degree wheel there and there are some instruction it is pretty basic on how to do it if you download the degree wheel it's in pdf format easy to print after i gave the cylinder a good hone i wanted to add a little bit more old school feel into this 208 conversion so with some high heat temperature paint I painted it black and there is a little bit of science behind this because black dissipates heat better it will keep your cylinder cooler I know it just sounds so plain and simple but it's a thing and it makes the whole thing look pretty good um, so I gave it a couple licks of high temperature paint and the cylinder now looks like new I hope you enjoyed today's video in the next one, I will definitely, definitely talk about the uh, smart carp. Don't forget to comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I will see you then.